It's a green energy dream. The sun shines all day, and the wind blows constantly. But alternative energy is the last thing you might expect here in Afghanistan's war-torn Panjshir Valley. Yet after three decades of violence, tragedy, and destruction, this is where Afghanistan could be going green. Wind, solar, and small hydro have enormous potential in Afghanistan. New Zealander Tony Woods has worked for years bringing sustainable energy systems to the economically deprived. Much of the development activities that communities aspire to is underpinned by the provision of a reliable modern energy source. And Afghans certainly want more energy. Providing electricity to Afghans would help win support in fighting the insurgency. But 90% of Afghanistan has no power grid, and it will take years to build one. The national grid in, in Afghanistan is, is largely absent. Many of these isolated communities don't have access to a grid at all. With no power grid, development agencies often rely on diesel generators to bring power to Afghan villages. But fuel is expensive. That means many electrification programs fail as diesel generators gather dust. But the wind and sun are free, and solar systems require very little maintenance. So renewable systems give villagers power they can afford. Dr. Sultan Sultania has a diesel generator to make clean water for his clinic in the Panjshir Valley. We have engine, but we haven't fuel. But Tony Wood's company, Sessa, installed a new solar system that solved his problem. With the solar power, yes, we can make healthy water, yeah. Renewable systems are also good for remote areas because solar panels are easily portable, even over very rugged terrain. For larger projects, there's a system called deployable energy. Shipping containers packed with batteries are trucked to villages. Windmills and solar panels charge the batteries, and the villagers get a mini power plant. One container can electrify a small Afghan village. To build the containers, Sessa trains Afghan men and women. Samia is a solar technician. But solar panels and windmills can make easy targets for insurgents. But we've found that the community becomes so protective of, of the infrastructure that's built that we have not had any problems at all with damage or, or sabotage. Renewable energy may be high-tech, but it does work here. There's often an assumption that developing countries can't work with high-tech. We've found that to be not the case in Afghanistan. Afghanistan could be setting a green energy example that even developed countries might envy. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.